because he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy temple, holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Um, thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rachel. I just wanted to say about something beautiful. It's one of those songs that's just so simple, but actually sums it up really, doesn't it? So, there are some highly distinguished people sitting around a table discussing things, and they came across the subject of temptation. One said, sometimes I like to drink too much. Another said, sometimes when I go out, I like to step out on my wife. Another said, I like to read dirty magazines every now and then. And another said, I like to gamble. They got to the end of the table, there was a man with a big smile on his face. And they said, so what tempts you? Or are you smiling because you can't be tempted? And the man replied, I oh, know I can be tempted by gossip. And I can't wait to get out of here and tell people what I've heard. In Sunday school one morning, the leader was reciting the Lord's Prayer. And when she said, lead us not into temptation, little Johnny was out skipping the beach head because I can find the way myself. But Frederick William Faber says this, every moment of resistance to temptation is a victory. Every moment of resistance to temptation is a victory. So in Matthew 4, we find Jesus at the beginning of his mission, given to him by his Father. His baptism has occurred, the Holy Spirit has come upon him. God spoke his approval and declared his son's royal identity. Jesus' purpose is in motion, and there is a battle to be fought, an enemy to be faced, a battle against Satan on the grounds of temptation. This is the greatest battle of all time. Don't worry about the throne in Manila. This is a confrontation. The devil's temptation directed at Jesus in the wilderness of Judea were observed by no other human being. Jesus was entirely alone, and therefore, we could know nothing of this unless Jesus himself had told his disciples. And he reveals the secret, it's not really a secret, but the secret to victory over temptation. If Jesus' baptism in the Jordan declared his loyalty, his testing in the wilderness demonstrated it. Here, Jesus proves He's worthy to receive and reign over the kingdom his father would give him. The setting for this encounter is no accident. The wilderness of Matthew 4 has significant meaning. Eremos means solitary place. A lonely place without the aid of friends implies a place where Satan rules because it's a place of separation. It's actually been suggested by some that Jesus entered the wilderness with the specific purpose of engaging Satan on his own ground, where Jesus would intentionally allow Satan to tempt him, but without success. Jesus enters a world held under captive, 
under the curse of sin to free it from Satan's grasp by the sinless life, by living a sinless life, yet dying a sinner's death. Matthew, it appears, has two purposes for presenting Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. First, Jesus' victory actually demonstrates his divinity. His power to resist the only other great ruler and dominion in the universe, Satan. And the second reason is because his victory over temptation is a pattern that we might follow to overcome sin in our own life. <coughs> to prepare the way for Christ to rule in us means we must reject sin through temptation. To participate in Christ's kingdom, we must live victoriously over sin. So let's look at the temptation of Jesus. This one is really interesting because it says that Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit. The Spirit of God planned this moment. Second, notice that Satan is the one doing the tempting. And we three, see three different titles used here for Satan in this passage. He's called the devil, he's called the tempter, and he's called Satan. The devil sought to destroy Jesus and he seeks to destroy us. So God is leading Jesus to be tempted. Satan is not doing the actual tempting, Oh, sorry, it's Satan who's doing the actual tempting. What we need to realise here is that God is not actually tempting Jesus. It says in James 1, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. God never tempts us. However, God can test us. Or prepare us. If we go back in James 1 to verse 2, Starting at verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So what God uses for building up, Satan seeks to destroy and recognising this fact in the moment will prepare us to face temptation and allow God to use it for our good rather than Satan for evil. Just as God used it <coughs> is to prepare Jesus for his ministry. Verse 2 shows us that while he was in the wilderness, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now when we talk about fasting, here Jesus is talking about food, but it doesn't necessarily have to be food. Maybe it's something that you love. Maybe God's asking you to fast on it so that you'll seek Him rather than the thing that you love. I know somebody who was asked to sell their golf clubs. This is quite some time ago, about 20 years ago. He sold his golf clubs. He was got cold people. Do you have something that you love more than God? Jesus, though, is giving up food in order to focus on God. And it's in this moment of physical weakness that Satan seeks to tempt Jesus and entice him into sin. So let's look at the response. When Satan tempts Jesus, we hear these words each time. It is written. Jesus responds to Satan with the word of God every single time. So here's the crux of the matter, people. If you want to resist sin, if you want to resist temptation, know the word. Now, a few weeks ago, I said Bible stood for something. Does anyone remember what it is? All right, basic instruction before leaving earth. We need to know. If we're tempted to be, uh, sorry, if you want to know how to overcome temptation, it's the word of God. When you're tempted to be selfish, Philippians chapter 2, 
do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. When you attempted to be prideful, Mark 10, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. When you're tempted not to forgive, Ephesians 4, and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. When you're tempted to worry or be anxious or to look at something you shouldn't, remember Philippians 4, and I know I quote these verses a lot, but I'm just going to do it one more time. Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lonely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything of any moral excellence, or if there is anything to be praiseworthy, dwell on these things. When you're tempted to think that God no longer loves you, Romans 8, For I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you're tempted to be fearful, Isaiah 41, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to your righteous... Oh, sorry, I will hold on to my righteous... I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Sorry, Timothy writes. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Do not be afraid. Does anyone know how many times it appears in Scripture? 365. 365 times. So you can read, do not be afraid every day when you get up. Every day. Do not be afraid. When we're tempted to sin, we need to get back to the Word of God. That's the key. The Word of God. Now, Satan tempted Jesus in three ways. He tempted him by appealing to his physical need as he was hungry. Now, I would imagine any of us would be hungry after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. And and remember, Jesus was human. So he certainly would have been hungry. Jesus needed physical provision, but he needed God more. And so do we. Satan tempted Jesus by appealing to his personal pride. And he was due special protection from the angels because he was the son of God. Satan's so saying here, hey, you're the son of God. You deserve special treatment. The angels will protect you. Jump off the temple. But Jesus knows better. He'd rather be a humble, obedient servant than put God to the test. He knows who he is and he knows his calling. And lastly, the devil tempted Jesus by appealing to his powerful rule. As he offered Jesus uh, the throne to all kingdoms in the world. You want to know what the irony of that is? He already had them. Hey Grace, would you like to buy your own car? That's what it is. Jesus already is the authority over the world. But every time Jesus responded with, it is, it is written. Finally, Jesus said, go away, Satan. Now, there are verses in James, James 4, 7 to 10. I'm going to read from the NIV first. Therefore, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. The message doesn't always, in my personal view, get it right. But I love 
what it says here. This is James 4, 7 to 10. So let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin, purify your inner life, quit playing the field, hit bottom, and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way to get on your feet. I just love that. We will be tempted in multiple ways as Jesus was. But we should go back to the word of God. Because that's what Jesus did. There was a time, probably about 20 years ago, there was a bit of a fad. It was the WWJD fad. What would Jesus do? I was in a hotel with one of those bracelets on and the person behind the bar says, what's that say? And I said, what would Jesus do? He said, oh, I thought it had something to do with Jack Daniels. And I said, no, no. But what would Jesus do? Jesus shows us what he does. He goes back to the word. So now, finally, let's look at the sinlessness of Jesus. Verse 11. He maintains his holiness and as a result was later, later able to fulfill his purpose of being perfectly holy sacrifice for sin. Afterwards, angels came and began to serve him. This probably refers to them coming to refresh him after his very long fast. He is indeed God and worthy of being tended to by angels. Jesus is rejuvenated after he withstood Satan's temptations. I believe that we will be rejuvenated by the Spirit of God if we are faithful to him and withstand the temptations of Satan. You might say, but Craig, I've been resisting for a really long time now. Well, I would say to you, keep on keeping on. Keep resisting Satan and running to God and his word. Don't give up. Without Jesus, we cannot help but sin. However, in Jesus, we have new life and have been set free from sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. We can access the same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus, or is with Jesus, and we can be obedient as Jesus was. 2 Corinthians 5.17 In Christ I am a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. If you're here today and you're in Jesus, you are a new creation. In Jesus. Jesus did not give, to, give in to Satan's temptations for multiple reasons. Firstly, he knew that God had a specific mission for him and he, that didn't have a shortcut. Who's ever taken a shortcut? Tried to take a shortcut? Got bogged. That's what happens. When we don't follow God's plan, we get bogged. He was called to live a life of humble obedience and sacrifice. And guess what? We're called to live that life too. The obedience and sacrifice. We will be tempted, but God's path is better than the devil's. Jeremiah 29 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. So Jesus' response when being tempted is a model of obedience for us. So here's the Messiah's plan. Understand that God may be leading you into a place where you'll be tested. That's okay. But when we're tempted, we are to respond with the Word of God. And by the way, just want to say, if you've got a Bible and it's sitting on your shelf and it never gets opened, it's not active. It's only active when we open it and read it. 
I'm not saying that applies to anybody here. I'm assuming everybody opens their Bible every day and reads it. But I'm saying if you don't, then that's what you need to be doing. Because you only get to know the Word if you read it. You only get to know God if you read the Word. Resist the devil and he will flee. So my challenge to you is to when you are tempted to recall scripture. Who here has favourite Bible verses? A couple of them. I would suggest that you all need them. I would suggest that you need to know some. 2 Corinthians 5.17 which I've already mentioned. In Christ I am a new creation. Genesis 1, 26, uniquely made in the image of God. I could go on, but I'm not going to. Go home and find some for yourself. Study the Word. Know the Scripture. Immerse yourself in His Word because then you'll be able to recognise the lives of Satan. There's a song by Hugh Lewis in the news, Some of My Lies Are True. And if we're not into Scripture, then what sounds good, might, you might actually think is true, but it's not. Like cleanliness is next to godliness. Not actually in Scripture. Sorry, Mark. Um, but there are things that people go, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's in the Bible, isn't it? Uh, actually, no. No, it's not. There was a quote I saw on Facebook about um, if money is the root of all evil, then why are churches after yours? And as somebody wrote underneath, it's not money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. <coughs> but if you know the word, you know that. Know the word. I know I probably sound like a broken record because every time I get up here it seems I say you need to know the Word. But you know why I say that? Because you need to know the Word. Mm -hmm. um, so know Scripture. Immerse yourself in the Word. Develop a plan of obedience to confront temptation. It would actually be helpful to write it out. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did partial care this semester and we did a journaling assignment. It was great. When we got it back, we were in class and me being the silly boy that I am, said to Brian, I didn't like the journaling assignment. And Brian said, why not? That it made me get in touch with my feelings. Because I can think them and then I can push them aside. But when I write it down, I actually have to deal with it. Have a plan. No verses, have a plan. The question you need to answer is, what will I do when I'm tempted? Go to scripture. Go to a friend who knows scripture. Plan ahead of time to be obedient. I'm sure with the insurance company, people don't um, fail to plan. No, people don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan. People don't fa fail to plan, they just plan, they don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan. So have a plan. Jesus was faithful and he's calling up to faithfulness. Satan said to Jesus that he was preparing for his ministry, if you are the son of God, do this. However, Jesus knew God was calling him to obedience and sacrifice. Years later, oh, if you are the Son of God, do this. When did that happen also? There was a second time in that. Jesus was on the cross. If you are the Son of God, get yourself down from there. Yet Jesus knew God was calling him to obedience and sacrifice. He would resist the temptation to come off the cross 
Why? So that we might know God. If Jesus comes off the cross, do we know God? No. Because Jesus had to die for our sin. feel like we're in the wilderness right now, with Riverton waiting for a decision. And yes, we are in the wilderness. But you know what that is? So we can focus on God and what God is calling us to. It's not about me, it's not about Grace, it's not about any of us, it's not about Wayne or Ian Howard with their chair or their congregation. It's about God and His will and us being called to obedience. It's never easy in the wilderness, but it is a time for reflection on who God is and His plan for our life. Not just us as individuals, but us as a community. Let's pray. Lord, I'm sure for many of us, it does feel like we are in the wilderness. But Lord, this is a time and we should be focusing on you. Lord, getting to know you better than we already do today. Lord, may you speak to us in a way that we may hear. May we turn off the outside noise of the world, of gossip, of the distractions so that we can know you more and more each day. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunities you give us to get to know you. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you send your son to die for our sins. And that was, he was obedient to death on the cross so that we could have a relationship with him. In Jesus' name we pray.